Okay, let's check the first fives, please. We're going to start off with the total kinetic energy of all the molecules that make up a sample. We talked about this a lot yesterday. It's where you see how many there are. What was it? Thermal energy. Okay. Oop, went too fast. Uh, to move from one object to another or one place to another. Transfer. Oh, it's frozen. That's why y'all can't see it. Okay. Heating and a heating unit that stores and warms water. Water heater. heater. You'll have one of those in your house. That's how whenever you turn on the hot water, you actually start getting hot water after a couple of minutes. Some of y'all can have a tankless one that's very small. Uh, the rock type formed when magma cools and becomes solid. What is that? Igneous, Igneous rock. And the process of sediment being buried and pressed together. Compaction. Compaction. Your objective is the same as it was yesterday. Which heating system will warm the air in the school more? Your today's title is warranty. And today's date is 1-21-2022. Now, while you are finishing up your first five and turning it in, let's kind of review some of the things that we've been talking about, a lot of our vocabulary. We have molecule, kinetic energy, system, transfer, which we had on the first five, collision, change, stability, equilibrium, and thermal energy, which again was on the first five. We started off in chapter one. We were talking about what is happening in the air as the school gets warmer. And we talked about the transfer of energy from the hot water from the boiler system into the air. Then we went into chapter two, which is what causes air molecules inside the speed up. And we started discussing about has, as they speed up, they're gaining kinetic energy. And then we went into chapter three, which is which heating system will warm the air in the school more. So we're talking about a boiler system that is next to the school. It's a very small boiler. It will pump water, hot water through the school during the day. And then the water will go back into it at night to warm up again. Or do we want to use an underground water system that is gigantic and use that water to heat the school? So we're talking about a little bit of water compared to a large amount of water. Some of the key concepts that we've been discussing. Number one, things are made of molecules or other types of atom groups. You are made of molecules. The table, the computers, the water, everything's made of molecules. Number two, when a thing gets hotter, its molecules are moving faster and has more kinetic energy. And the opposite is number three, when a thing gets colder, its molecules are moving slower and have less kinetic energy. And temperature is the measure of average kinetic energy of the molecules of a thing. So as the average kinetic energy increases, your temperature increases. As the average kinetic energy decreases, your temperature decreases. Then we started talking about actually making the two things touch. And when the two things touch, energy moves from high to low. So the, hot, or the high temperature to the low temperature object, the high kinetic energy to the low kinetic energy. Number six, energy is not created or destroyed. It just transfers from one thing to another. And we talked about equilibrium. It's going to keep changing until equilibrium is met and it's stable, somewhere in the middle. Uh, number seven, the molecules of a system will transfer energy until the system reaches stable state. Number eight, for things at the same temperature, the things with more molecules has more total kinetic energy or more thermal energy. So we talked about the tiny little teacup and the giant bathtub. Even though they might be the same temperature, the bathtub, because there's more water, has more thermal energy. Number nine, at equilibrium, the average kinetic energy or the temperature of the molecules in the system is the total kinetic energy evenly divided by the number of molecules. That's how you find the average. You add up all the numbers together and divide by how many there are. And then finally, number 10, 
When a thing gains or loses energy, the energy gained or lost is divided among all the molecules of the thing. Okay? If I bring donuts to you, I don't give all the donuts to him. I spread out the donuts to everybody. That's the same thing with energy. As you bring energy, it's spread out among all the molecules. Now, we have seen this in a digital form. And this is the digital form that we've been looking at. Which one has the higher kinetic energy? The one on the left. How do we know? There's more movement, which means there's more kinetic energy. The temperature is higher, and our thermal energy is higher. Okay? This one, it's moving a lot slower. Our temperature is lower, and our thermal energy is lower. Now, even though my temperature is set to zero degrees Celsius, I still have some thermal energy. That goes back to one of the first articles we read in this unit was about absolute zero. That's when there's no more energy. If we're at zero degrees Celsius, that's not absolute zero. The absolute zero is zero degrees Kelvin, which is around negative 273.5 degrees Celsius, which is extremely cold. Now, if I make these two items touch, what will happen? Equal. What do, what do you mean by equilibrium? It will transfer. Okay, the energy is going to transfer. Transfer what? High to low. High to low. So it's going to transfer from high to low until what is met? Equilibrium. Equilibrium. Now, if this one's starting off at 100 degrees Celsius and this one's starting off at 0 degrees Celsius, what will equilibrium be? 50. 50. It's what's in the middle. And sure enough, as I take this and I drag it and make them touch, energy is moving from high to low. And you can see the yellow is moving over and spreading out, like bringing donuts for everybody. My temperature of sample A is dropping. My temperature of sample B is rising until we get to 50, which will be our equilibrium. Now, what I have to remind you is that this is a perfect world. As in, there's no air around it. There's no, nothing underneath these blocks. Because if there was air around it or if there was blocks, energy would also be transferring out. But we don't have that. Now, if we go and look at our graph that goes along with this, we can see equilibrium being met or st stable. We have our high energy dropping. We have our low energy rising until the two actually meet. Now, it's all fun to look at this, but the particles are so tiny that it's difficult to actually see this in the real world. So what we have to do is we have to kind of mess with it so that we can actually see it in the real world. So on your tables, you have a cup of hot water and a cup of cold water. Go ahead and close your Chromebooks if you haven't done so already. You should have a hot, uh, the glass beaker has hot water in it and the cup has cold water in it. You should also have two things of food dye. They should be the same color. We have green, blue, and red. If you want to do this experiment at home, you can. Uh, just don't use yellow. Yellow doesn't show up very well. So what we are going to do is we're going to drop about two to three drops of food dye into the hot water. And we're going to drop two to three drops of food dye into the cold water. And we're going to see what happens with each one of these. So again, the hot water is the beaker. The cold water is the cup. So go ahead and take one of the food dyes for someone in the group. We're going to start with the hot water. We're going to start with the hot water. Go ahead and take the lid off and go ahead and drop in three drops of food dye into the hot water and watch what the food dye does. Hot water is the glass beaker. Watch what it does. Go for it. There you go. Woo! What was that, Ms. Smallwood? It wasn't supposed to spread It wasn't supposed to spread that quickly. Why not? Because she puts too Whenever the dishes came out. Well, I, 
You say that, you say you put too much in, it spread really quickly, but if I look at everybody else's hot water beaker, it did spread out very quickly, okay? What else is something that we saw when the food dye went in the hot water? What did the food dye do? Spin. Spin. It expanded, and basically, it's difficult to see the food dye in the water now. They have become one, okay? So now, somebody different, is going to put the food dye in the cold water. And we're going to watch what happens when you put the food dye in the cold water. Now, this cold water has been sitting in my fridge since before school started. Uh, and now that it's, now it's on your table, so it might have warmed up a little bit, but it's nowhere near the same temperature as the hot water. So go ahead and put your food dye in the cold water and watch what happens. Okay, what was that, Tobias? It went straight to the bottom. Did it mix, Brayden? No? Can you still see the food dye in there? Yes. Has it completely mixed yet? No. No. So with the hot water, it mixed in, it spun around, it quickly made it one. With the cold water, did it spin? No. No. Did it mix in? No. No. It just did what? Sank to the bottom. Sank to the bottom. Nothing too fancy about it. It just dropped down to the bottom. It completely sank. And now it's starting to spread out from where? The bottom. The bottom. The bottom. While the hot water, as soon as it went in, it spread out everywhere. Now, let's say you take your hand and you wrap it around the cold water cup. What's going to happen? Nothing. Um, you think nothing? nothing? It's going to spread. Why do you say it's going to spread, Ms. Green? Your hand, is it hot or cold compared to the cup? Hot. hot. So your hand is what kind of energy if it's hot? Well, um, high energy. It's high energy. And the cup of cold water is low energy. So as you put your hand on the cup, what's the energy going to do? Transfer. Transfer. It's going to move from your hot hand to the cold cup. Now, is it going to get the same temperature as your hot water? No, because the hot water was close to boiling. But as you'll notice, the longer you touch it, the more the food dye spreads out. So if I reset this up here, I have two samples. I'm going to add kinetic energy by heating up the sample on the left until we get to 100 degrees Celsius, which is about the temperature of the hot water on your table. And I'm going to lower this temperature until we get to zero degrees Celsius, which is not quite the temperature of the water on your table. So as, as we added the food dye to the hot water, y'all said it spun around. It mixed. It spread out very quickly. That's because as the food dye enters, it bounces around with all these molecules. It's thrown all over the place, and it gets that same kinetic energy, and it's going to move just like the particles. However, on our cold sample, it's going to slowly move through and push its way through the particles until it reaches the bottom, and then it's going to spread out at the bottom. Think about it in the hallways. It's easier to move in the hallways when everybody's moving fast. But it's hard to move in the hallways when everybody's just walking slow and talking and hugging and kissing. We see it. Could you even see Rebecca? Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, 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 true. Cool, 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 cool. So, as our particles heat up, and we'll say that this is your hand, and we slowly touch this, we're going to add kinetic energy 
And that food dye that's slowly sitting at the bottom, this is you adding your hand, is then going to start being thrown around by the particles, as in the tardy bell has now rung in the hallway. The particles are going to start moving more, and the food dye will spread out. Okay? So, again, what I really want to make sure you all remember from this discussion is a couple of things. Here we go. The more kinetic energy something has, the hotter it will be. Okay? The less kinetic energy something has, the colder it will be. Because temperature is the average kinetic energy of a substance. As you add kinetic energy, temperature goes up. As you remove kinetic energy, temperature goes down. Now, energy is not created or destroyed. It's transformed from one thing to another or transferred like we talked about a little while ago. Energy moves from high to low. If, this is, if I see you on your test coming up and you do this while taking your test, I'm happy. I'm not going to be upset. I'm not going to laugh because it shows that you memorized it or you remember it. It doesn't matter the state of matter. It doesn't matter the state of matter. Energy will move from a liquid to a gas or a gas to a solid or a solid to a liquid. Your hand's the solid. The water's the liquid. If you wrap your hand around it, energy will transfer from your hand to the cup to the water. Energy will keep moving until equilibrium is reached. They are the same. It's stable. Thermal energy is the total kinetic energy of all the molecules. So right now, out of your two cups, and I measured, your beaker of hot water is 200 milliliters. Your cup of cold water is 300 milliliters. Which one has more thermal energy? The cup. The cup. Why does the cup have more thermal energy? More water in it. Because it has more water in it. As something has more molecules, it has more kinetic energy. And then finally, there we go. The more molecules, the more thermal energy. The less molecules, the less thermal energy. 